Hi everyone, good morning and welcome back to Get Your Play Online. My name is Gracie, if you haven't joined me before, and I am very excited to be with you today. So today we will actually be making a memory game that has a carnival circus theme because that is the theme for this week's programming. So, uh, some of the supplies that you will need are some cardstock paper, which, well, I think cardstock works the best. Uh, you'll need some markers, like these ones, if you want to color and decorate. Uh, you can also, if you want, and you're not really into coloring, you just want to keep to the basics, you'll need a pen. And then, I think, oh, and some scissors. Here are the scissors. So it's really pretty easy. Uh, so to give you an idea of what it is going to look like, so we are going to have, so first of all, let's, let's create some squares and we're going to use these squares to make our memory game. And so if you've ever played some sort of memory matching game, you know that there's the little squares and they have something, uh, that you flip over and you're trying to match two things together. So... I am going to fold some paper here and we're going to make some squares. So by folding this paper, I am creating squares that are about the same size. Now for this, it's okay if they're not perfectly the same size, but I'd like to make them pretty close. Okay, so now I'm just going to start cutting these. I'm cutting them just along the lines that I folded. So I'll do another one so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so we've got a couple more folds here. I'm going to cut this in half, create a couple different squares. Okay or rectangles, these are rectangles. Okay, so here's the first, here's the beginning of our pile here. So, for example, so this is, I have a list of things that you can use and I'll see if I can attach it here now, otherwise I will just uh, go ahead and, okay, I might just have to tell you as I go or post it in the comments. So, uh, so our list here that we have today has a bunch of different circus carnival sort of activities and then some fun facts about them. So it's a little bit of a combination between uh, trivia and also memory matching. Okay, so I'm just going to paste in the comments all of the facts that you will need for this. All right, so you should see it now, and I have, uh, so you'll see it starts with elephant. Okay, so we've got elephant, monkey, lion, grizzly bear, camel, popcorn, ski ball, corn dog, so lots of very different options. Okay, so. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like for each one. So we'll have things. So we'll, let's start with elephant. So on one side, you'll write elephant, or if you're feeling artistic, you can also draw an elephant. Okay, so we have elephant on one side. And then the fun fact about the elephant, if you look at the comments, is this is the largest land animal in the world. And the good thing about cardstock is it's harder to read through the cards uh, when you're playing the game. So I can't really tell what's on the other side when I have this face down. If I hold it up to the light, I can see it a bit, or I can see through it a bit. 
but uh, that's why cardstock is good to use. Otherwise, you can always uh, write the word elephant with a pencil uh, because that will make it harder to see uh, and make the game more fun. So we'll have all of these face down, like this is the largest uh, land animal in the world. So it'll be face down like this. And when we have all of our cards set out like this, you'll be trying to guess which animal is the largest land animal in the world. And if you flip it over, you will see the answer and see that it's an elephant. Okay, so let's make the rest of our cards. Now that you have more of an idea of what this kind of looks like. Okay, so the next one on our list is a monkey. So monkeys, uh, so the fun fact for monkeys is that some types of this animal live on the ground and some live in the trees. So, and I have a bunch of different markers here, and so if you want, you can mix up the colors. Maybe I'll use orange for this one just to make it fun. Okay, so here we have a monkey. So I'm going to write monkey on one side. You can also keep the colors the same because that will make it a little harder because you won't have you won't recognize colors because that can give you a little bit of a hint if you remember that monkey was orange. Okay, so the fun fact for this one is that some types of monkeys, uh, so you write some types of this animal live on the ground and some live in trees, and you're keeping it very general because that will keep it more of a mystery when you're trying to guess. So. Some types of this animal live on the ground. And because you have this written down, it's okay if it takes you a little longer to write it. Um, you can definitely go at your own pace and finish even after this video is over if it takes you a little longer. Okay, and some live in trees. Nope, I added an extra E on trees. Trees. There we go. Okay, so now we have monkey on one side, and on the other side we have some types of this animal live on the ground and some live in trees. All right, so, so far we've got elephant, we've got monkey. And again, the way this game works is you will see these facts laid out and you're trying to guess. So if you only have two of them here, you'd be like, which one is an elephant? Which one's a monkey? This is the largest land animal in the world. Some types of this animal, animal live on the ground and some live in trees. You're trying to figure out what they are. So it's a fun way to learn some things. And there's I can and when we're finished, I'll when we're finished, I'll also go over several different ways that you can go about playing the same game. Or using these cards, I guess. Okay, so the next one we have is a lion. So I'm gonna go back to purple. I'm just gonna have a couple colors because I don't want to make the game too easy. So we've got lion on one side. And then what is the fun fact about the lion? The fun fact is that the roar of this animal can be heard from five miles away. Alright, so, one side we've got lion, the other side we have the roar of this animal can be heard from five miles away. Alright, so what is our next in the list? Our next part in the list is the grizzly bear. So the grizzly bear can be, it's, the fact for the grizzly bear is this animal can be eight feet tall when it stands on its back feet. 
so tall. Okay, so here we go. Grizzly bear. And then on the other side. So I'm just using, I have this pen that, or I've got this marker that has a little, like a skinny side and a bigger side. And so I'm using the little side to write the fun facts. And I would recommend using uh, a pen or just something that allows you to write the full fact. Sometimes when you write with a big marker, it makes it hard to fit as much information. Okay, so we're going to write this animal. can be eight feet tall when it stands on its back feet. All right, grizzly bear. This animal can be eight feet tall when it stands on its back feet. All right. Next one, I'm, I'm going to have to keep some orange ones up, otherwise it's going to be too obvious that the orange one is monkey. Okay, so the next one we have is camel. And the camel can drink 30 gallons of water in 13 minutes and can rehydrate faster than any other mammal on Earth. So that is a mouthful. Uh, okay, so we are going to write camel on one side. And on the other side, we are going to write this animal can drink. That is a lot of water. 30 gallons. of water in 13 minutes and can rehydrate faster than any other mammal on earth. And if you don't feel like writing this much, you can always just write the first fact if there are two facts. It just gives you more to go off of if you have more on there. So there it is. This animal can drink 30 gallons of water in 13 minutes and can rehydrate faster than any other mammal on earth. Crazy. And that was the camel. All right. On to our next one. This is not an animal now. This is a fun fact about something related to a carnival. So the word is popcorn. I'm going to use my orange marker. And the fact is that Americans eat around 17 billion quarts of this every year. This amount would fill the Empire State Building 18 times. And if you don't know what the Empire State Building is, it's a really, really tall building in New York City. And it's a skyscraper. And so for Americans to eat the amount of popcorn to fill that building 18 times is a lot of popcorn. Okay, so let's write the word popcorn. And on the back, I'm going to switch to the other side of my marker. And it is Americans eat around 17 billion. That is so much. I like popcorn a lot. In quartz, that is a measurement, so that is 
you know, an amount of popcorn. Okay. Okay. I'll say as a fun fact, it could fill the entire Empire State Building. Eighteen times. Now you don't have to write that additional fact if you don't want to. But I thought it was interesting. Okay, popcorn. And then we have uh, Americans eat around 17 billion quarts of this every year. This amount could fill the entire Empire State Building 18 times. Okay, great job. Now I'm going to switch to my purple marker. You can switch colors if you want to. And next one is cotton candy. So cotton candy, uh, the fact is this was originally called fairy floss. It was invented in 1897 by candy makers William Morris and John C. Warden of Nashville, Tennessee. So, cotton candy originally came from Nashville, and it was originally called fairy floss. And in some countries, they actually still call it this. Okay, so, on one side we write cotton candy. Okay, so I've written, oops, written cotton candy, and on the other side, I'll write this was originally called fairy floss. It was invented in 1897 by candy makers oh William sorry William Morris and John C. Wharton, oops, of Nashville, Tennessee. So TN is the abbreviation for Tennessee, and that is why I wrote it like that. All right, our next one is ferris wheel that's pretty exciting okay so the ferris wheel the fun fact is that this was invented in 1893 for the chicago world's fair all right let's switch back to orange now do we have enough purple in there yeah let's use orange okay so where were we ferris wheel so on one side, I'll write Ferris wheel. Okay, I'm just going to put something under this so I don't get marker on my table. Okay, so on the other side, we are going to write, uh, this was invented. in 1893 for the Chicago World's Fair. And the Chicago World's Fair was this big event where people came and brought, you know, their, uh, some people I think brought new inventions and it was just, it was a big deal. 
1893 for the Chicago World's Fair. All right, so now we've got a lot done so far, and now we are going to do some more paper folding and cutting to make some more uh, rectangles for our game. Okay, so if you didn't catch it before, I'm folding in half. And then, show it like this. okay, so I fold it in half. I'm going to fold it in half again. And then I'm going to fold it in half again. You've probably done this in school before, but just in case. Okay, so now I have this crease here. I'm going to cut along this crease. Okay, and now I've got a crease here. So you can kind of, you just cut along the creases and you can kind of cut a couple at a time. So now I've got a couple there, a couple here. I've got another crease here, so I'm just going to cut along this line. And then I'm actually going to put these together so that I can cut two at once. And then I'm just cutting along this line here. Okay, so see now I've got I've got some more memory cards ready. Okay, so the next one we have is balloons. So we are going to write on one side balloons. Where did my purple marker go? went hiding. Oh, here it is. Okay. So on one side, I'm going to write balloons. And the fun fact for this is that these were first made by Professor Michael Faraday in 1824 for use in his experiments with hydrogen. So he must have been a, a professor in the sciences and he was doing some experiments with hydrogen, which is an element. If you haven't learned about it yet, it is in the periodic table of elements. And so he was doing some experiments with hydrogen and he created balloons for those experiments. So then I guess from there, I don't know the whole history, but balloons, it was probably seen that balloons could be used for fun and not just science experiments. So now they are. Okay, so let's write balloons. And with all of these fun facts, if you see one that you find super interesting, you can always uh, ask one of your parents or caretakers to help you do some research online. Or maybe that's something you can do by yourself if they let you. And you can look up the history of balloons or anything else you find interesting. So we're writing, these were first made by professor. And if you don't know what a professor is, there's somebody that teaches in a college or a university. Professor Michael Faraday. in 1824, which was a very long time ago, for use in his experiments with hydrogen. And now, uh, you know, if you go to a birthday party or something and they have balloons, and they're floating, you know, when balloons kind of float and they don't just fall to the ground, that means they have helium in them. And helium is another element in the periodic table of elements, and that makes things float. Okay, so, uh, yeah, we're good on that one. So we've got balloons, and then we have our fun fact, which is these were first made by Professor Michael Faraday in 1824 for use in his experiments with hydrogen. Okay. All right. So 
So our next one is the merry-go-round. So I'm going to write on one side, merry-go-round. I love merry-go-rounds. I'm assuming you've probably been on a merry-go-round before, but if you haven't, they're very fun. Okay, so the fun fact for this is that along with roller coasters, it is the oldest amusement park ride that is still in use. Okay, so here we go. So that is our fun fact for Marigaround. We're going to write along with roller coasters. So that will give you a hint if you're playing the, the matching game that the word is not roller coasters. Uh, okay, so along with roller coasters, this is the oldest amusement park ride still in use. Awesome. Okay. Now the next one is a clown. Okay, I'm going to switch to my orange marker again for this. You can switch colors if you want, or you don't have to. Okay, so on one side we'll write clown, and on the other side, our fun fact is that, excuse me, some of these people go to school where they learn acrobatics, juggling, and other skills. And acrobatics is things like when you see uh, a tightrope that people walk across, or when you see them on those kind of what are they even called? Those swing things that fly through the air. And they do flips and all sorts of tricks. Those, that is acrobatics. Okay, so on one side, we will write clown. On the other side, we will write a fun fact. So some of these people... Go to school where they learn acrobatics, juggling, and other skills. I don't know how to juggle but I've tried. I could probably juggle like two juggling balls, but I don't know that that's considered juggling. Okay, clown, and then our fun fact. And remember, they're all written in the comments if you need to refer back to a fun fact. Okay, next one is ski ball. If you've been to an arcade, you've probably seen ski ball. And it's a little bit, little bit like bowling, but you try to get the balls into certain uh, slots with different uh, points. And usually there's at an arcade where you get tickets depending on how many points you get. Okay, so ski ball. So our fun fact about ski ball is when these were first invented, the alleys were 36 feet long. Now they're 14 feet. I mean, think about 36 feet. If you know how long a foot is, a foot is about this big. 36 feet is extremely extremely long and I think they thought they took up too much space so they made them a bit shorter. I mean that is less than half of how long they used to be. Okay so ski ball is on one side and on the other side we are writing our fun fact that oops, other side. Okay so when these were first invented The alleys were 36 feet. Now they are 14 feet. And this right here that I wrote that is called a semicolon and it, it helps to kind of separate out sentences. And if you haven't learned about it yet, 
Don't worry about it. Okay. Next one is a swing ride. I'm going to switch back to my orange marker. Okay, so swing ride. The tallest one of these is over 400 feet tall. So on one side, I'll write swing ride. On the other side, I will write... The tallest one of these is over 400 feet tall. That's very high. And I don't know where that is actually. You could do some research into where that would be. Alright, we got another one. Swing ride tallest one is over 400 feet tall. Okay, next one is corn dog. Corn dogs are delicious. Okay, and the fun fact about these is these were invented, okay, I'll read it before I write it. So it is, these were invented by vendors at the Minnesota State Fair in 1941. They were first served on sticks at a drive-in in Illinois in the summer of 1946. So, these were invented By vendors and vendors are people who sell things they sell things like food and crafts at the Minnesota State Fair in 1941 And then this is our second fun fact, which you don't have to write. Uh, they were first served on sticks at a drive-in in Illinois. in the summer of 1941. Oh, sorry, 46. They were invented in 1941. In 1946, they were first served on a stick. So one person invented it, and the other person took their good idea and made it even better. That's what a lot of inventors do. You know, they might take an idea that already exists and then make it better. And some people just come up with completely new things, which is also, or which is even more amazing. Okay, so next one is pretzel. And the fun fact is that some legends say these were invented by an Italian monk. And a monk is, um, is a religious person who... Basically, they kind of live in, well, they live in a place called a monastery, and it's really quiet there, and they basically read and study all day. So, it is not the most likely place that you would find somebody who is making, a, what did I say, a pretzel. So, on one side, we are going to write pretzel. It's, this marker is not most clear the way I wrote it. And our fun fact, so we've got pretzel. Our fun fact is some legends say, oops, say,
So some legends say these were invented by an Italian monk. Alright, next one is ice cream. I love ice cream. It's one of my favorite things. Okay. So, fun fact about ice cream is that it takes 12 pounds of milk to make one gallon of ice cream. So one gallon is kind of your normal sized amount of ice cream. And wow, 12 pounds of milk. I don't know exactly what to compare that to, but that's a lot of milk. Okay, so we're gonna write ice cream on one side as we have before. Ice cream. Okay, we're gonna have to cut out some more here. Okay, on the other side, I'm going to write it takes 12 pounds of milk to create one gallon. And you're gonna write of this because you don't want, uh, because that keeps the mystery so you can guess. And the other fun fact is that 90% of American households eat it. So, there you go, there's our ice cream. I'm not gonna write the second fun fact just to save some time, but you definitely can. Okay, now let's cut out some more squares. So, here we go. I'm gonna fold it in half. Fold it in half again. I keep saying squares, but I mean rectangles. I hope you know your shapes better than me. Uh, fold it in half again, and fold it in half again. All right, so I'm gonna cut this one in half. Oops. Okay, so cut that in half. I'm gonna cut this in half. So fold it together so that'll make four. I've got another one here that I can cut in half. So you just keep cutting along those lines if there's any lines. And then I've got two more here. And I'm gonna tuck this into this one and cut along the lines. Okay, so this will be enough to finish off here. So we've just got a few more. Uh, the next one is lemonade. I'm gonna write this, oh, I'm gonna keep it in orange. I feel like lemonade needs to be in orange or yellow, but yellow is hard to read. Okay, so lemonade on one side. And then our fun fact is that in some countries such as England, Ireland, Australia, and New Zealand, lemonade means a fizzy drink with a lemon flavor. So it doesn't necessarily just mean, you know, here it's more lemon juice and sugar and water, but there it can be a fizzy drink. Okay, so I'm going to write in some countries. Such as England, Ireland, and Australia. And this, this little sign here, that means and. This means a fizzy drink with lemon flavor. Okay. Now to the next one, close to the end. Okay, we've got snow cones. I'm gonna write it in purple. Snow cones. On one side, and on the other side, we're gonna write our fun fact, which is during the Great Depression and World War II, these were popular as one of the only treats most people could afford. So the Great Depression was a time in history uh, when people didn't have a lot of money and businesses were really suffering and um, yeah it was 
just very hard financially for people. So, during the Great Depression, World War II, and this means two. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, these were popular. As one of the only treats. Most people could afford. So, the reason for this is that ice is basically just water, frozen water, and, you know, something like ice cream would cost a lot more money to make and to buy. So, snow cones, and this was a very popular treat during World War II and the Great Depression because it, people could afford it. Okay, and now the last one is funnel cake. So, let's see got quite a mix of colors here and I think we've got a pretty good variety so I'm just going to do purple and write funnel cake on one side funnel cake and then on the other side I am going to write this delicious treat used to only cost 25 cents it's hard to imagine many things costing 25 cents now And that is 25 cents. Okay. So, we have made it to the end of making our deck. Thank you for your patience and perseverance here. So, next step is that I'm going to quickly show you some of the ways you can play this game. So, one way you can just make a trivia game out of it. And you could hold the deck and... So I could hold the deck and I see all the fun facts and I could ask people if they know what the answer is. So I'd say this delicious treat used to only cost 25 cents and people would guess. And if they didn't get it, I would tell them it was a funnel cake. So you can do it like that as kind of a quiz trivia and just ask, you know, make sure you're saying the fact side because it'd be very hard for people to know from you just saying the word what the other side was. Okay, and then the other way you can do this is that you can do a memory game, which was kind of the original intent of this, um, the original plan. So, it's best to put it on the side with the facts, because if you put it on the side, again, that says lion, I have no idea, even if I know a lot about lions, I have no idea what the fact will be on the other side. So, for example, I'm going to mix it up a little bit. Okay, so I've got these ones here, and I'm trying to guess. So this is where you can kind of play, play trivia by yourself. And so I'm going to try to figure out which is which. And if you want to, you can also have a list of the words somewhere, and that will help you uh, to know which one to match it with, if that makes sense. So then you at least have almost like a word bank that you can work from to figure out which fact is which. So here I've got all my facts. I'm going to turn them around so you can see them actually. All right, so we've got all these here. So one we just learned was this delicious treat only costs 25 cents. And if we had a little list of words from our word bank, we, that would also really help us. And I'll flip, I'd say, you know what, I think that's funnel cake, I'll flip it over, yes, I'm right. Okay, so then once you flip it over, once you've gotten it right, you keep it flipped over and you try to get all of them. And if for some reason I said, okay, some types of this animal live on the ground and some live in trees, and I said it's a parrot, I flip it over and it says monkey, I got it wrong, so I keep it flipped over this way. And then I might also want to mix it up and come back to it. So I would wait a couple turns till you come back to it. 
make it more challenging for yourself. But you can kind of do it however you want. And you can look online and get some more inspiration, but that's the basic way that I would recommend playing it. Alright. You probably don't want to stare at an empty table, do you? So, so look at this whole deck that we made. It's pretty fun. So you did an awesome job sticking with me here and doing the hard work to make this deck of uh, a memory game or trivia questions. And now that you've put in the hard work, now you can have a lot of fun with it. So thank you again so much for joining me today. I had a lot of fun and I hope you did too. And I just love learning some interesting fun facts. So have an amazing weekend and uh, I will see you next week at the same time. So have a great weekend and enjoy your fun with the memory game. Bye!